On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, Ever Forward runs aground in Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, it's another evergreen ship. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to What's Going On With Shipping. If you haven't had an opportunity yet, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Yeah, as I said in the introduction, they did it again. I, I know. It's almost a year since Ever Given went sideways in the Suez Canal. And for those of you who don't know, that's where this channel all started. It started with what's going on in the Suez and it has morphed ever since into what's going on with shipping. A uh, kind of uh, weekly and more than that, usually about two, three videos a week where we talk about what's going on with global shipping. Well, Ever Forward, one of uh, Ever Evergreen's vessels, this is one of the Ever F class, a smaller version of the Ever G class, which Ever Given was, has gone uh, ground in Chesapeake Bay. So let's go ahead and head over to the story. This is a story posted on G Captain by uh, Mike Schuller. Evergreen container ship aground in Chesapeake Bay. Uh, 334 meter container ship owned by Evergreen Marine is aground in Chesapeake Bay, not far from the port of Baltimore. Uh, Ever Given was nearly 400 meters. Spokesman for the Coast Guard's 5th District confirmed that MV Ever Forward grounded Sunday night as the ship departed with one pilot on board, AIS ship tracking data shows the Hong Kong flagged ever forward with a draft of 13 meters had just gotten underway from Baltimore to her next port of call in Norfolk, Virginia, when the grounded occurred near Gibson Island. An animation of the ship's track shows the vessel proceeding at a normal speed of 12 knots in the moments leading up to the incident. Let me show you that. This is the animation that Mike Schuller had on his story. You'll see the vessel here departing. The time here is UTC which is four hours ahead of uh, what you're seeing right there. Uh, and you'll see she goes from 12 knots down to zero. Uh, she went out. Now she's supposed to be making a southbound turn here. And you notice she was in the process of that southbound turn. Play it again one more time for you. She's heading out. She's heading roughly southeast and started her southbound turn when she stopped. And that's gonna be important as I show you here in the rest of this story and explain what I think has happened. This is Ever Forward from Marine Traffic, one of the best apps I think out there for this. A couple of things to note, wind 12 knots, uh, wind direction to the south. So not a lot of wind here uh, involved. We're not talking about a high wind situation as we saw with Ever Given. Uh, come down here, a container ship built in 2020. So she's two years old, sailing under the flag of Hong Kong. Uh, carriage capacity about 11,850 TEU, current draft around 13 meters. If we pop her up here and we'll go ahead and throw her up here and we'll show it to you on marine traffic where she's at right now. Here she is. She's showing status of ground, zero knots, draft, uh, draft 13 meters. There are two tugs, the Eric McAllister with her. You'll see her right there, one of the McAllister tugs. And then a Moran tug, April Moran, right there with her. Uh, they're both on standby around her. The vessel was part of a route that goes from the east coast of Asia through the Panama Canal to the east coast of the United States. Here is her route. She was in the midst of, uh, let's see, voyage uh, 1133, uh, 7 West. Uh, she's on this Asia U.S. East Coast service. So she came through the Panama Canal on February 22nd. Uh, excuse me, she arrived at the Panama Canal on February 22nd. She transited the canal on the 27th, 28th. She was in Savannah from March 3rd to the 5th, Baltimore from 12th through the 13th. Obviously, she departed last night. She was heading southbound to Norfolk. Uh, she was supposed to be in Norfolk and then head up to New York. And then she does the return route where she basically heads back down to the Panama Canal, transits the canal, heads across over the China, Taiwan, Hong Kong to Yantian, back through the Panama Canal and does this route again. This is part of a fairly typical service that we've seen started with the expansion of the Panama Canal. Since the new lane of the Panama Canal went in in 2016, these Panamax, new Neo-Panamax vessels, vessels that are now large enough to go through the new lane of the Panama Canal comes through. And these vessels are typical, about 12,000 TEUs. 
You see them coming through. This is an alternative to using the West Coast. And ships like this in particular are in really high demand right now to deliver cargo along the East Coast. And you see they're going to four ports, Savannah, Baltimore, Norfolk, and New York, and then returning back for the voyage. So very typical. We're seeing a lot of ship traffic do this. They're, they're bypassing the West Coast coming through, and this is largely due again to that canal. So best story I've found so far on this is right here from Chesapeake Bay Magazine. Uh, Chesapeake Bay Magazine has this piece right here. They give you the kind of the information I said before. They talk about Coast Guard Petty Officer First Class Stephen Lehman tells Bay Bolton the container ship ever forward with sails from Hong Kong, ran aground about 11 p.m. Sunday, no one injured. Ship was heading to Norfolk, went aground. We know all this. Uh, the ship reportedly draws about 42.6 feet of water in an area where Ever Forward is sitting. NOAA charts indicate 20 feet of water at mean low water. Okay, wait a minute now. How did she get into 24 feet of water when she draws 42.6 feet of water? This is all going to be very important here in a second. Uh, this story also includes a video, which is the key here. Annapolis School of Seamanship, CBM, sister company, captured video of the ship Monday afternoon from the water. You see it loaded to the top of containers. AOSOS, this is the Annapolis School of Seamanship, Vice President Matt Benhoff, shows where the ship is in relation to the red channel marker. Watch below. I'm going to go to this video here and show it to you. I'm going to let it play, and then I'm going to come back and comment on it. So let me go ahead and head over to it. Hard to see, but off the stern is the red. Here's the red here. Slowly come around, you can see it's just outside of that channel. Red right off the stern. Right, right there. Yep. All right, so what they just showed you was the ship is outside the channel, and I'll give you some more detail about that in a minute. I just want to show you some of the images right here. Uh, notice how high this vessel is up out of the water. You see the boot topping there. You can see the red water line right there. She is full of boxes, by the way. She is nearly fully loaded, which means she's probably dumped boxes off. She's loaded with empties. She should be lighter up. She's not going to be as full, but she's definitely lighter up. All right, so let's break this down for a second. So I'm going to take you back in this video here to the very beginning. He's talking about the red buoy. So right here, you're seeing a red buoy. Now that's red buoy number 14 right there. And he's showing you the next red buoy. The next red buoy is right behind the vessel. You can kind of see it right here, right here. You can kind of see that marker right about here. And what he's doing now is lining up on the two buoys. And this is the channel. The problem is, as I'm gonna show you right now, he is lined up on the channel. The channel is to the left of your screen. The ship is outside the channel. She has gone past the channel. She was coming southeast. She had a turn right, almost due south, to head into the channel. And she missed the turn. And she either turned late or there was a mechanical issue. I'm not sure. But let me go to the chart and I'll show you what I'm talking about specifically right now. So this is Marine Waves. Now, Marine Waves has literally all the nautical charts you need for the United States. Uh, it's a free app. You can load it on your phone. Whenever I sail or do anything, I have it on there. And it really superimposes what many ships have today is electronic charts. And this is the kind of system they use. They take GPS, they take inputs from navigation and put you in this position. So up here is the port of Baltimore. Here's the channel coming out of Baltimore. The vessel is right about here. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and give you some uh, ideas. So the vessel was coming down this channel. Now, there are two types of buoys. There's red and green buoys. And the saying in the United States is red on right returning. So the buoy should be on your right side when you're returning home. The channel comes down here heading on roughly a south by southeast heading. And right here, there's a turn. You got to make this turn right here and then head almost due south into the channel. And here are the buoys. Now you see the red buoys. Now we showed you two red buoys lined up here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more here. So you can see, oh, went the wrong way there. Sorry. So buoys are numbered too. So you'll see right here, the buoy numbers right here. So here you go. Here are your buoys right here. 
And each of these buoys will have markers on them so that you can identify them. So each of these buoys are, are, are labeled. And again, the buoy numbers are important. Again, if you go back to the video here, this is buoy number 14 right here. This is buoy 14. Well, buoy 14 on the chart is right here. I know it's, it's kind of hard and you don't see the numbers very well here, but if you look right here, there you see the 14 there and there's buoy 16 right there. And so what happened here was the ship was coming southbound or south southeast heading this way and she had to begin her turn. The only thing I can think that happened here is either she started the turn too late or a mechanical issue on the best. Now the ship maintained speed. We saw that in Mike Schuller's replay of it. The ship was doing 13 knots. So the ship had to turn right and turn right to come into the channel here, but she didn't. So we know buoy 14 is right here. This is again, that buoy we're seeing here. Buoy 16 is lined up. She went out of the channel right either just above buoy 16 or just below buoy 16. And she's in this water right here. This water is measured in fathoms. Uh, a fathom is six feet. So you'll see right here where it says seven and three, that's seven fathoms, three feet. Uh, this is just the way they do nautical charts. Uh, she draws 42 feet of water. 42 feet of water, that means that, you know, right here in, in the edge of the channel right here, she should be fine. I mean, you should be drawing almost 57 feet of water, but right here between buoys and 14, 16, you see this shallow water right here. You see markers here for four, five fathoms. Well, five fathoms is 30 feet. Four fathoms is 24 feet. And we know from the story right here that she's in 24 feet of water at mean low, low water, meaning at the lowest level the water is at. She's at 24 feet. She's drawing 42.6. That means she's gone off here into this area that's not dredged. Somehow, either mechanically, the vessel did not turn or pilot error. Now, let me talk about pilots for a second here too, real quick. Every ship transiting up and down the Chesapeake Bay has a pilot on board. It used to be a Virginia pilot would pick you up down at the lower end of the Chesapeake Bay. Then you would switch over to a Maryland pilot. Now they have what's called Chesapeake Bay pilots who run the entire length. Uh, and, and again, that's kind of uniformity to try to create, you know, just one pilot taking you up and down the bay. Uh, I will tell you, I know pilots who've done this. Some like this, some don't like this. So I'm not sure. There's always two reasons for a vessel accident. It's human error or mechanical error. And usually even if it's mechanical error, it, there's humans involved somehow. But she missed the turn. And because she missed this turn and she's now probably right around here somewhere, she's aground. And she's aground good because the other problem you have here is tide. She's in 24 feet of water. This is the tide table for that area pulled it up right here. This is actually for Annapolis. Annapolis is fairly close by, not exactly, but it's fairly close by. And you'll see there's a tide range here. There's a tide range, but the tide range here isn't very big. So at 9 a.m. this morning to 4.11 p.m. today, the tide range went from 0 0.03 feet above normal to 0 0.99 feet. That's less than a foot there's less than a foot of tide. Now you're gonna get a little bit of a higher tide later in the month here, maybe about a foot and a half, but not a lot. Not enough to bring her from 24 feet of water into 42 feet of water. So that is a substantial problem. Uh, they're going to have to drag her off here somehow because she has gone up on that embankment pretty good. It looks like, again, I don't know. She's between buoy 14 and 16 right here. This is that spill area right here, or this, this non-shallow area. And understand something, the Port of Baltimore just dredged this area out. They've got that channel down to their marks. They wanted the dredge to 50 feet so they could bring in these large container vessels, these post-Panamax vessels. One of the things that has just happened is they just put in these new cranes into the Port of Baltimore to service them. Again, link to my video right here, uh, so that they can service them. And somehow this ship missed the turn. Now, was she going too fast? She was doing 13 knots coming down. Should not have been too fast to make that turn. The question is, in a light load, light containers on board, does she maneuver differently? I don't know. 
I don't know. These are questions we're going to have to ask. Now, the channel is open into Baltimore. So she's sitting here just outside that channel. Again, we're outside buoys 14 and 16 right here. So she's sitting right about here. So the channel is open. You can still get by. She's not like ever given blocking the channel. So the channel to Baltimore is still open. So no reason to do it. They will hold off right now till they figure out what's going on. Probably what's going to have to happen here is they're not going to be able to get her off with those tugs that are there. They're going to have to bring in larger salvage tugs to pull her off. Uh, they will try to drag her off initially. Uh, they may have to lighten load. Uh, and in case of lightening load, they'll probably take fuel and ballast off first. Taking containers off a vessel is a very difficult thing to do when she's out at anchor. We had this issue with Ever Given. Fortunately, she's not blocking the channel. There's no rush here. Uh, they don't want to create an environmental issue with a spill in Chesapeake Bay with fuel oil. So they're going to take it easy to try to get her out. Uh, if they need to, they can dredge along her, try to deepen the water out behind her and alongside of her to try to pull her into the deeper part of the channel. But that's my best interpretation of what has happened with Ever Forward. Uh, this is a developing situation. I don't have all the answers. Not exactly sure, again, what was going on. We know a pilot was on board. We know that the vessel um, uh, got out of the channel. We know exactly where she is now. So we'll keep you posted. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be having my uh, weekly summary, uh, summary video, What the Ship, where I talk about the top, uh, top five stories in news. So if you can, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos. When they come out, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, if you can, please support the Patreon. Uh, that allows me to do these videos and keep you posted on this. And I also apologize for my view today. Did not expect to do a video today. 30th wedding anniversary today, me and my wife. I did not expect to be on uh, doing a video today. So until our next episode, Sal, signing off.